It has been a while since I have flown the Kit Fox, and I'm kind of running out of time to be able to enjoy this before I head back to Papua New Guinea this June. So I've been down in Sun and Fun this past, well, basically a week and a half, so I haven't been able to even get out here or do anything. But today I'm heading down to Havasu to join up with some guys and then hopefully get out and do some bush flying after lunch, probably the next video. So this one, we're heading down and I'm actually gonna attempt to shoot an approach um, with what little stuff I have in this airplane. So let's do a quick walk around and make sure everything's working and get out of here. All right, let's just make sure our strobes and wigwag are working. So these are L Aero LEDs, and the really cool thing about this kit, for one, all three of these blink at the same time, so when you're behind it, can't quite get all the way far enough back, but you can kind of see how they're blinking together. And the really cool thing about this kit is actually you don't have to have like a strobe box. I have one right in my plane from my previous strobes, and the way the builder installed it, I can't even get it out because I'd have to remove the fabric to be able to get to everything. You've got wigwag, you've got strobes. The whole works super light and easy. Took me a while though. All right, well, let's get going. Oh, and I have a new checklist box. This one is like my second prototype one coming out soon for you guys. You can't see it. I'm still working on figuring out how I can get it even brighter for night lights. It has all, these all turn red and when you, when you flip them off, the light goes off. So if you missed one, it's going to be glaring red at you right there. Pretty awesome. I'm really excited about this and you can get them customized if you guys can see that. Got my end number there. And the coolest thing, I know so many of you guys have asked, can you get them custom labeled? Yes. I will have that available on my site very soon where you guys can customize them. You can put your end number there. You can pick red lights, green lights, or whatever. I'm really excited about it. Okay, man, traffic, spare model, Kit Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, taxiing runway 21. And copy landing traffic. Kingman. All right, let's throw our landing light on just for taxiing. All right, I see him on short final now. Once he's down and on the ground, that way, you know, he might not be taxiing somewhere else. So, we're going to try the GPS approach into Lake Havasu today. Going to do lunch there and then jump back out and hopefully get some off airport stuff down in that area. Hopefully. If the weather is good. Here is the uh, taxiway. I'm going to do intersection departure, but I'm just going to go ahead and pull off here and do a run up off the taxiway. Already up to temperature. And if you guys can see, my fuel gauge isn't bouncing around like it used to, because I did put a little resistor back there. So, all right, well, we're warmed up. Let's go up to 4,000 RPM. Check our ignition. That's good. And we'll do an idle check and make sure that we are still charging. Got landing and I'm just sitting here at idle, which I am still over 12, but if I turn everything else off, like strobes and everything like that, been at idle, we are good. All right, fuel cap, fuel, our cap. Kingman traffic, finish the Fremont Yankee, clear of 2-1, Kingman. Our brakes, our controls, sure that we've got full movement on those. I did take my rudder lock off. Get our flaps set. Uh, trim. I've already got in here going to Lake Havasu as well as on my iPad. I've already got the radios up and going. Transponder. Our harnesses. Let's throw our strobe back on and our landing. Kingman Airport. Automated weather observation 1742 Zulu. Wind 200 at 04. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature one niner Celsius. Dew point minus zero seven Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero eight. Kingman traffic experimental Kit Fox two four kilo Bravo will be making intersection departure Delta three on runway two one to the south southwest. Kingman traffic. 
All right, well, if we need to abort for any reason, we'll just stay on the runway. Clear left and right. Checklist is complete. Do a last minute flow check. Everything is where I'd like it to be. Airspeed's alive. Slowly get our flaps out as well, hit our brakes. Oh, it feels really good to fly again. I flew once down in Florida at Sun and Fun, had the opportunity to go out and do a little bit of aerobatic training and an extra 300. Didn't go well, if you haven't seen that video, it's the one right before this one. Uh, I probably think I need to build up my endurance on um, aerobatic stuff. I get road sick if I'm not driving myself, so didn't go very well, but it was so much fun though. I did really enjoy it. I made myself sick. It wasn't like making me sick. It was, uh, yeah, it was myself. All right, I've already got it plugged in here to 211. That's going to be going to the VOR, Needles VOR, I believe. We'll make our last call out of here in just a minute or so. And I really did want to get out and go flying really today, hopefully tomorrow, heading up north to go camping, probably in the next video with this with one of my sons. But I'm just running out of time. You guys know I'm heading back to Papua New Guinea here come June. Uh, lots of self-discussion on whether I want to keep this plane or sell it. I've decided I'm going to sell it. So probably when this comes out is probably my initial just letting you guys know I am selling this. I might or might not have some details down below. What I think I'm gonna do is just do a full walk around of the plane rather than just kind of letting people know what is. Let me just pull my power back just a little bit because I'm not really climbing very quickly. I'm gonna do a walk around video for you guys so I don't have to answer 50,000 emails about what it has and different things like that. But it has been a good plane. I just don't want to store it for three years because I think I'm just going to come back and have to get replacing a bunch of different items, things like that. All right, let's flip off our landing light. We don't need that going anymore. We'll leave our strobe on just for the remainder of this flight. Uh, we'll just leave it around 5,200 RPM for a cruise here. We're just at 5,000 feet. Let's go ahead and flip our um, autopilot on. We already got this on. Autopilot on for there, and then we can hit altitude, and it just jumps to the next nearest 100. Okay, my traffic spin them out. Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, five miles to the south southwest, 5,100, departing the area for Havasu. Kingman. Go. I just left Kingman. I'm heading down here to the Needles VOR first. And then I've already got in just the points. I don't have a subscription to be able to look at all the uh, all the charts, but what I did do is I open it up on a web page so that we can also look at it right here. So we're basically heading to, to Needles, initial approach fix, and then heading in and from there. So 5,000 feet is what we would need to be at Needles, which we're 5,200 feet right now. Once we basically Turn inbound from there though, we can drop on down to 3,100 feet for the next stop. For the minimum descent altitude of 2140 because we're just category A because this thing's so slow. But I wanted to do this during the daylight hours just so I could kind of see a good surrounding of the mountains, what I would expect, things like that. Because I'd like to do some night flying with this to try out my LED landing lights, things like that. I've done two flights so far at night, and, but I haven't done any cross country. So I just kind of wanted to run this through, do an instrument approach, things like that, just because well, it would be safer. And probably what I'm gonna do is actually follow down the highway, just because I don't really want to be over just complete open desert at night, single engine, Rotax. I'd be a little bit safer if I was flying over, following roads, things like that, in case I did have any problems. 
Yeah, with my strobes on, I'm still charging for 13.8 volts. When I flip everything else on, let's do my land, let's do wigwag actually, which is just kind of going like this. Drops down to 13 point, well, 13.1 for a second, but then just jump right back up to 13.8. Let's throw our navs on. Drop down to 13. And then now it's back up to 13.8. So, flip those things off though. But that's good to know. I know in the pattern in idle, it was more like 13 to 13.1 with everything on at night. So going back to selling the Kid Fox, I would like to have it done and sold out the door by middle of May because it's going to be a very busy month for me of May and yeah I just want to be able to make sure that because it took me a lot longer to get everything done because I had never bought an airplane I had never bought a plane so I didn't really know everything I needed to do and it just took a lot longer I initially was going to get a loan for it but getting a loan for under for a plane that's a hundred thousand or less is actually a lot of work and you have to jump through a bunch of hoops and actually it was going to be more expensive like an extra three to five thousand dollars more to get the loan and all the things you had to do to get a loan to set it all up so keep that in mind if you are thinking that you might possibly be interested in this plane let's see if we can get weather down there now finally it's calm Altimeter 3001, great visibility. Gonna be light and variable all day. And let's take a look. Elevation 783 feet. Runway 32, calm. So yeah, we could just go down in this, enter into a left downwind and it land on 32 up to the north. Pattern altitude, basically 1800 feet. All right, well, looks like about 15 minutes left to go. Just texting my buddy who's probably waiting down there. They're all getting down there at 11 for lunch, and it is 10.59 right now. It took a little bit longer to get my plane ready than I thought it was going to. Wow, I don't know if you guys can see this. This whole valley is just scattered with these orange wildflowers that are absolutely gorgeous. Wow, that's incredible. I love the desert and spring. It's so green. It might not really show up like it's green right now, but everything is very green. That is awesome. So it's not going to be perfect coming in on this just because I can't actually sink it in with this. I can actually, well, no, I probably could. I just don't actually know how to put in multiple <laughs> because I don't ever use this 496. How about this? Here we go. Let's do um, EED, direct to. There we go. That's the first point. Good pop. And we're going to hit nav on this. And that way it will actually fly the direct magenta line on here. This does not appear. No, it is on. I just wanted to get my Stratix up and going just so I have traffic on here. Next one is Payon. This is too old and does not have enough updates. It probably does have them in here, but they're, they probably changed the name since then. All right, well, no worries. Let's get out of there. And then once we head out, once we get to the VOR at 5,000, which we are right now, we'll head down down to 3,100 feet by the time we get to Payon. And then Rackhog is the next one down to 2620. In a decent, a short amount of time, which is 1.3 miles, and then we got 1.5 miles left to go to a minimum descent altitude of 2140. We have two and a half minutes left to go. When I do any instrument flying, like, I haven't done anything. Well, this isn't instrument flying, clear, because it's a beautiful day out. But I actually started using my time a lot more rather than distances as far as, like, kind of a cue to let me know. Because, I mean, if you think about it, you got, okay, well, I've got 6.1 nautical miles to drop from 5,000 to 3,100 feet. But, like, oh, well, how long is that gonna take, you know? I mean, you could do all the math in your head, but it's a heck of a lot easier to just go, man, I've got 30 seconds, I've got one minute, whatever else like that. So if you're starting instrument or you're playing around flight sims, things like that, that's how I do it. I found it to be a lot easier. 
1.6 nautical miles to run before we make a left-hand turn to 151. Start our descent down to 3,100 feet. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here just to go down to um, the airport. So turn off that. That way I have the distance, things like that. So when I'm making my radio calls, it will go off of what everybody else is going to want. So or 13 miles from the airport, so I'll start, I already see it, I'll start making my calls as I start heading inbound, just in case there's any other airplanes in the area, which I can quickly look to see. Autopilot's kicking in, and let's head on down to 3,100 feet now. Obviously traffic, experimental Kitfox, 24 Kilo Bravo, one, two miles to the north, northwest, leaving 4,700 on descent on the practice approach, GNSS 32 Havasu. All right, still just a little bit off of my actual track that I want to be on, and make a little left-hand turn over. 3,800, we're going down to 3,100 feet. 3,100 and then 2,620. All right, winds 200 at three knots. But yeah, we'll land on runway 32, coming back up here to the north. All right, there we go. Now I'm back on my course. Almost up to our first waypoint, just coming up to 3,100 feet now. Altimeter 3001, level off here at 3,100 feet. Obviously traffic. Kit Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, 8 miles to the north, 3,100 feet on the practice. Arnav 1-4, we'll be tracking for a left downwind, 3-2 Havasu. All right, almost up to our point, 3,100 feet, we're really not that far out, but I can understand why they want us 3,100 feet because of all these mountains right here. All right, yeah, there we go, down to 26.40, 1.4 miles. All right, we're past Ragcog now, and we can go down to 2140 now. Opposite traffic, Kit Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, five miles to the north, 20, or 2300 on descent, tracking for left downwind, 3-2 Havasu. All right, we're just about ready to enter in for a 45 left downwind, 3-2. There was another plane in the circuit, but I am not seeing him or hearing him. Again, so okay, there he is, turning base to final. Obviously, traffic, Kit Fox 24 Kilo Bravo has landing traffic in sight, turning base to final. Currently entering into the powder midfield, 3 2, Havasu. All right, we'll go a third of the way down, then take that exit. And I know where I'm kind of wanting to go now, so. All right, he is just about ready to touch down. And we've got someone doing a run up right now as well. Opposite traffic, 2-4 Kilo Bravo, left downwind, 3-2. We'll land long, past the 1,000 foot mark. There's no point in landing short. Opposite traffic, Kit Fox, 2-4 Kilo Bravo, turning left base, 3-2, Havasu. We have flaps and landing. We'll do landing now, because I've already made all my calls, except for just turning my final. We'll go full flaps now. Checklist is complete. Obviously traffic, 24 Kilo Bravo, turning final 3-2. All right, a little high, but it's all right because I'm landing quite a bit ways down past the 1,000 foot marker. Alpha 2. Go on camera. Obviously traffic, Kit Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, clear the runway Alpha 2. We'll head up to Bravo 3, then jump off there 
the other guys have already ordered for me because I got here a little bit later than I was thinking. Hope you guys did enjoy that flight. Like, but be sure to check out the video before this if you haven't already, where I uh, did a little bit of aerobatic training and um, and then after this, hopefully get out and do some off airport stuff. Thanks again. See you guys next time, and welcome here to Lake Havasu. See you guys next time.